Hey, this is Father George Corgan with a few Sunday thoughts here on the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, January 1st on, on the new year. You know, sometimes life you know, comes at us and it just comes at us in a way that's just relentless. It's, it's unbending, it's unyielding. And there's still that part of us that wants to sort of grab it, to sort of understand, to kind of dissect the moment. Because ultimately we do want to control it, even as uncontrollable as it is. You know, Mary, probably a teenager, when all these events are associated with the Nativity, our celebrations of Advent and Christmas, come roaring at her, this wave upon wave of salvation army, or excuse me, salvation history, come into this one woman in this dizzy and intense pace. I mean, at my age, if that stuff had come at me, I don't think I'd, anyone described me as well. He pondered and treasured these things in his heart. But that's exactly what Luke says of Mary and her experience. And I think in that experience of, you know, something, you know, men will never be able to experience, but the woman, you know, in the child in her womb, where the child natively hears the mom's heartbeat, and the mom begins to connect, learn to listen to the heartbeat of the child she carries. In Mary's case, maybe that was preparation for learning to listen to the heartbeat of Jesus and the, the heartbeat of God in the course of their life together. I mean, just think of, take the rosary. Take the rosary, for example. You know, the joyful mysteries, Annunciation, Visitation, Nativity, the Presentation of the Temple, the Finding in the Temple. And that doesn't include the stuff in between, like the encounter with the prophecy of Simeon and Anna, the murderous intent of Herod, the refugee escape, you know, to Egypt. It's a lot to process. It's a lot to process. And in there, trusting that the heartbeat of God was there, I mean, the other, the luminous mysteries, the experience of the public life of Jesus as she begins to see these things and begins to have a deeper appreciation of who this Jesus is, this Emmanuel. You know, the sorrowful mysteries, you know, the rapid, oh my God, wave upon wave of horrible events of the Holy Week. Uh, and even the glorious mysteries, you know, that follow. You know, Mary's watching this life of Christ, her child, you know, the heartbeat playing out in life. And then he's gone. An event that's life-shattering, yet life-changing for us all. And these are the memories she carried to treasure and ponder in her life to know the heartbeat of her son. You know, recently, a um, local guy, Caleb Williams of USC, star quarterback, uh, graduate of Gonzaga High School, in his acceptance speech to the Heisman Trophy, pointed out one of the most formative experiences of his life was being a graduate of a Jesuit high school. Like all young men who go through the Jesuit institutions, the theme is to be a man for others, to be a man for others. And it struck me that maybe that's a great description of Mary, the one who is this woman for others, the woman for others. You know, man her home life. Well, we're not gonna know much about her home life, and certainly not in scripture. But we can look at the lives of good and faithful women that we know and, and say, you know, if this, then how much so more so Mary? I think, and think of the women that I've known in my life at home and at work, the women I've encountered in neonatal intensive care, in the confessional, you know, women in prison, quiet conversations on the sidewalk in church, you know, in the refugee camps of East Africa, in moments of life and moments of death, casual and intense. And my experience through all of this is, is there's, when the kids are involved, there is this maternal love, this tenderness, this self-sacrifice which permeates these moments. It's a source of hope in these intensive care units. It's the, the extending of love to give to the child in prison, the child who's in bondage to drugs, you know, the child who's suffering homelessness, the child in war, the child in the cold of winter. There is this all embracing and support, this giving of life so that none of the children may perish. And it even strikes me that, you know, this is, this example of a woman for others is the antidote to indifference in our world. You know, Mary knew the heartbeat of Jesus, and yet she also pondered and treasured this and said what the meaning is. And I think maybe that's a great reason these readings are here at the beginning of January, this new year, where these readings bid us to listen for the heartbeat of God, the heartbeat of Christ in the life that we live, especially to treasure and ponder that we may live a life for others, to live a life for others. And we pray that 
the wisdom of God may be ours, that we may discern these things in the years to come. Amen. God bless and have a great new year.